So let's just have a look where we are at the present time. We're in 2009, 2010. We have a basic rate of income tax of 20% and we have a high rate of 40%. Um, and the personal allowance is 6,475 and you pay basic rate tax on, on the up to 37,400 pounds. So that's where we are at the present time. Let's just look at the changes that are coming in next year from 2010-11. As introduced at the, um, at the previous budget, there's going to be a new 50% tax rate uh, on income above £150,000. Now, if, if you have employees or if you are earning income just above £150,000 or around that mark, this needs to be looked at very carefully because there are ways in which um, you can reduce your income for this purpose. But that needs to be looked at uh, very, very carefully. He's also introducing a new 42% and half percent tax rate on dividend income. Uh, again, it's where uh, inc it's the top slice where income is above £150,000. And what this means is that if you receive a net, a, a net dividend, then at the moment you'll pay tax on that net dividend equal to 25%. From next year, you will pay tax on that same dividend at a rate of 36.111%. So it's quite a, an increase in, uh, in tax on, on dividends. Similarly, trusts and the trust rate of tax is, is increasing to the 15 to 42.5 percent. And there's also going to be a loss of personal allowances for anybody who is earning above 100,000 pounds per annum. And the, and the rate of loss is one pound of allowance for every two pounds of income you earn over 100,000 pounds. And this has quite an effect on the rates of tax. Because these are the rates from, from next year. Uh, up to your personal allowance, you won't pay any tax. If your total income is, uh, is less than £43,875, then you'll pay 20% on, on, on the majority of that. But if we look down, once we get to £100,000, we have a 60% tax rate. And the reason for that is that in that band from £100,000 to £112,950, not only are you taxed at 40%, but you are losing half of your allowance, which gives an effective marginal rate of tax of 60%. That's quite a high tax rate for somebody earning £100,000. And so if you have, again, employees, or if you are in that, that kind of band, then this needs to be looked at very carefully. If we look at an example of that, If you have an employee that, who earns £100,000 and you award him a £10,000 bonus, then after tax and national insurance contributions, he's going to receive £3,900 of that £10,000 bonus. What does a taxman get? Well, he gets £6,000 in tax, he gets £100 in employees' NIC, he gets £1,280 in employers' NIC, giving the tax man £7,380. So at that marginal 60% rate, your employee gets £3,900 and the tax man gets £7,380. So again, this is something to look at if you have employees in that uh, or around that marginal rate of tax. And just looking at how the um, increase in tax rate for 2010-11 affects uh, net income, then this is the, the table comparing this year with next year. As you can see, somebody earning £100,000, there'll be no change because the, the personal allowances are staying the same, the rates are staying the same at that level of earnings. However, for somebody earning £150,000, then they are going to pay £2,590 extra tax and NIC on their income. And for somebody earning £200,000, they're going to pay an extra £7,590 on their income. That's a 3% increase in tax on that, on that £200,000. So it's, it's, it's quite a, a reasonable rate of increase of tax. I mentioned earlier that um, one of the uh, introductions in this pre-budget report is an increase in national insurance contributions. Now, these national insurance contributions are going to be increased from 2011 to 2012. So we've got a little way to go before uh, they actually come into force. 
However, why 2011-2012? Why well, if you look at the uh, summary of the pre-budget report, this is when the Chancellor expects the uh, economy to, to be growing significantly at over 3.5%. And so the theory is that as the economy is growing, companies can, and individuals can afford to pay more national insurance contributions, and that will help to um, alleviate the £178 million of debt that we find ourselves in. So what's happening in that year? Well, it was previously announced at the budget that rates will go up by 0.5% from 2011-2012. He's announced yesterday that rates will go up by a further 0.5% from 2011-2012, which means they go up by 1%. Um, a little bit of window dressing by the Chancellor there, but I think we can all work out that 2 times 0.5 equals 1%. So the effect of, on all rates are that from 2011-2012 onwards, the Class 1 employee contributions will rise to 12%. The employer contributions will go up to 13.8%. The Class 4 contributions to 9%. And the additional Class 1 and Class 4 contributions that you pay over and above the upper earnings limit um, rise to 2% from its present 1%. And that's expected to result in a significant uh, increase in uh, tax in NIC take to the exchequer. The Chancellor also said that the budget was a budget to preserve jobs. And I wonder how an increase in NIC actually um, preserves jobs. But I'm sure the Chancellor will inform us in due course, if he's still around, of course. One of the big questions for owner-managed businesses is how do we take our remuneration, our monies, out of the company? And there's been this question for a number of years, should uh, shareholders take salary as they are directors or should they take dividends? The answer is that take dividends. Even with the changes, in fact even more so with the changes, especially the uh, NIC changes, dividends are best in all cases. Um, and so certainly for the, uh, the coming two years, unless something happens um, either in the, in the budget that we're not expecting or in a post-election budget, then dividends are best. And so the planning has to be to take for director shareholders is to take salary up to the national insurance limit, which will entitle you to the, the state pension, and then take dividends to top up the salary. And that's the most tax efficient way of remunerating yourselves. I'm just going to turn now to corporation tax rates. The small company's rate, it was supposed to go up um, this year to 22%, and then it was supposed to go up next year to 22%. Well, it's been further deferred. We don't know when it will increase, if it's going to increase at all. And so the small company's rate is staying at 21%, which is good news for the smaller companies. And there's been no change to larger companies' rates, so all of the uh, rates stay the same. And the corporation tax rates compare very favourably with uh, income tax rates. So if there is a mechanism whereby you can, take, you can retain profits for income purposes in the company, but extract funds in other ways, then that is something that we should look at, and I'll return to that later.